I'm Jerry Hesch, an orthopedic manual physical therapist, which means I treat joints, and I work at Hesch Institute in Aurora, Colorado. And this is a pattern of pelvic movement dysfunction I discovered maybe 20 years ago or so. And it has to do with oblique movement of the hemipelvis. Now, Lori has good vertical mobility. I can, I can push to a stop point that's called taking up the slack. And then I induce a similar force and the structure springs and it recoils, okay? And now I'm pushing on the flat part of the ischium and we have mobility in this direction. And now I'm isolating the top of the ilium and testing anterior rotation mobility and that's good. And then I'm doing the same thing, testing inferior glide. And I can see her heels bob up and down when I take up the slack. Then when I spring it and it bounces right back. Where she lacks motion is when I push obliquely. So let me show you on, on the right side, I can push obliquely at a 45 degree angle. I capture the PSIS in this little indentation here. And I push the ilium to a stop point and then I spring it. There's a little spring and a little recoil. Now this PSIS happens to be prominent, so it's more posterior than this one. It's also lower, okay? Um, and when I spring this obliquely, I can push a little bit to take up the slack and then there's no more movement in the pelvis. And then when I add, try to add a thrust with a reasonable amount of force and even increasing the usual amount of force there's no spring. Um, now usually this will correlate with greater tightness in the sacrotuberous ligaments. Her sacrotuberous ligaments, for reasons I don't understand, are um, a little less distinct. Um, so they feel a little bit lax. So that's, that's curious. Um, that's an artifact. Don't, don't know how to explain that. Um, but the treatment for this is to create an oblique rotation of the hemipelvis. And I want to protect her lumbar spine. I don't want to torque on her lumbosacral facet. And so what I do is I place two pillows under her stomach. So let's have you get up and let me put these under you. And these go under the stomach, not the bony pelvis. Okay? Good. So now lumbar spine is in flexion. Okay, um, then I take the left hip and I'm dropping the table down. So I bring the hip into a comfortable amount of abduction. Okay. And that's almost 45, maybe it is 45 degrees, okay? And I put my hand on the, on the lumbar spine to monitor it, okay? And then I just bring this into extension very slowly and I come to a natural, to a natural stop and I just maintain that. And I hold this for two minutes. And I think we'll go ahead and keep filming while I do this. I also like to push into her femur to create a glide as well as a rotation. So I'm leaning into the body with my pelvis. This is a rather rare pattern. It's a pattern that I had in response to a motorcycle wreck. It took me decades to learn that I had it. Um, I had instability of the pubic joint and when my pubic joint would slip inferiorly uh, it would give me a nauseating headache and a lot of local pain and when I discovered I had this downslip pattern, oblique downslip of the ilium is what I call it I treated it myself by putting my leg in this position and pulling by the ankle and just stretching doing it myself uh, and I was able to correct it and it's been decades now and um, the pubic joint is very stable once in a while when I do too much physical stuff um, 
you know, it will, it has a little bit of hypermobility. It'll, it'll slip and be symptomatic, but it's very, very easy for me to self-treat it. Uh, much, much better than the old days. So it's interesting how much the pelvis is, you know, connected, how treating the ilium affects the, uh, affects the pubic joint. So I'll do another 30 seconds and I'm going to add a little bit of glide through the femur. And it might be that she has a very interesting anatomy in her sacroiliac joint that allows this kind of movement. You know, probably a rare, a rare type of anatomy. That's just speculation. I don't have a 3D CT scan of her, of her joint. Okay, and so I'm going to bring this down slowly. And then let's take the pillows out. The Hesch model of treating the pelvis, we've, I've identified 16 movement dysfunctions in the pelvis that are not in the traditional osteopathic literature, not in the muscle energy literature. So my model is a more comprehensive biomechanical model. And the, um, the left PSIS still appears prominent and it still appears a little bit lower. However, when I take up the slack, there's greater excursion and I can now spring it. So we've restored oblique spring of her hemi pelvis. Interesting, the sacral tuberous feels more distinct. I don't know how that would work. Um, it may be that she has a developmental asymmetry. And so um, if all the motion tests are normal, and I'm going to do a lateral spring test, and she has mobility in that direction, then I accept the asymmetry. So my goal is not to make the pelvis asymmetrical. It is to make the pelvis symmetrical in terms of motion. And even though her, her pelvis probably developed asymmetrically, it doesn't mean that that would alter the motion through the joint. Um, so I accept that asymmetry. And so this is a summary of my presentation on what I named an oblique downslip of the left hemi pelvis or of the entire pelvis, an oblique twist of the entire pelvis. Nobody knows. We can't look inside the SI joint and it only moves a very small amount. So maybe it has more to do with the entire pelvis. Um, we simply don't know. But let's have you walk down the hall and give us some feedback. And then I'll have you come sit in this chair. Say that again loudly so the... I don't feel like I'm twisting anymore. Beautiful. So you felt like you were twisting when you were walking? I felt like my left side was twisting in. Nice. Interesting. Yes. I'll take it. Let's have you sit on the chair, please. More comfortable. Nice. That should be really easy for you to maintain. Really? Yeah, yeah. And it's such a rare pattern. I don't think I have another, I don't know if I have a video on this or not on YouTube. I have over a hundred videos, so I don't quite recall. But I appreciate you letting me film you because it's such a unique pattern. Yeah, of course. Thanks. Yes.